Hi, Roger here to help you get started quickly with Symphony I.O. Mark II's monitor workflows. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Sonarworks Sound ID reference app with Symphony I.O. to calibrate your control room for Dolby Atmos and other immersive audio systems. Before we dive in though, there are a few caveats to mention. First, you should determine the proper physical placement for your speakers before applying any corrective DSP delay. Dolby offers several documents and resources for setting up your control room that are available here. Second, you should acoustically treat your room to correct uneven frequency response before applying corrective DSP EQ. Now, this is a vast subject, but it's never been easier to learn about and apply corrective acoustic treatments. Finally, you may be aware that Dolby publishes a target frequency response curve that they suggest based on generalizations across a wide range of playback systems, from cinema to consumer. Now, you may find that in your room that you know really well, their curve doesn't match your experience. Since the Sound ID system makes it easy to apply the Dolby Target curve, you'll be able to evaluate it and decide for yourself. So with those points in mind, let's get started. Before calibrating your speakers, we'll assume that you've set up your 7.1.4 speaker array as described in the second video of this series. Also, you'll need to connect the Sound ID microphone to your Symphony I.O. using either the Mic Pre I.O. module or a high quality external mic preamp. The Sound ID reference system consists of a few different components. First, the Sound ID reference measure app, which measures your speaker array in your room and then creates a calibration profile. Second, the Sound ID reference standalone app and plugin that applies that calibration profile to your monitoring signal path. Once you've got the calibration mic and your 7.1.4 speaker array connected to Symphony I.O., launch the Measure app. The app will lead you step by step through the process of setting up the calibration mic, adjusting speaker levels, then measuring the room at numerous locations. The result is a calibration profile with EQ level and delay adjustments for each speaker. The first time I ran the system, I was pleasantly surprised how easy the entire process is. Once you've created your first calibration profile, it's time to hear the result. Open a Logic Pro Atmos project and navigate to the Mixer Master Channel. Now open the Sound ID plugin after the Atmos plugin then load the calibration profile that you've just created. Now, if you find that routing through the plugin isn't quite what you expect, you may have to click the Curve Assignment tab to confirm that each channel is routed to the expected speaker. Now that you're listening to your Atmos project through a calibrated system, potentially you'll find that the overall frequency balance is smoother and that imaging is more precise you can compare the Dolby Atmos target curve to a flat response at the click of a button. Now I've shown you the process for Logic Pro, but the Sound ID reference system is compatible with all major DAWs. I hope this series has helped you to get your Symphony IO Atmos system up and running quickly and efficiently. Once you hear the astounding and dramatic results of Dolby Atmos and Symphony IO, anything less just won't sound the same.